Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at more prayers of the faith, and this time, the Veni Sancti Spiritus. Literally, this Latin title translates into Come Holy Spirit. In the past, this chant has been used for Pentecost Masses and Mass on the Sunday after Pentecost. The chant itself came into existence sometime during the 1200s, and is still used today in some places. Again, there are English translations of this chant which were written to carry mostly the same meaning, while also rhyming. But for this video, I'll be using a closer translation to the original Latin words. Come, Holy Spirit, send forth the heavenly radiance of your light. The light of the Holy Spirit is the light of the truth, illuminating our minds to understand, as it says in John 14, 16-17, which refers to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Truth. Combined with Jesus' claim that he is truth in John 14, 6, we can conclude that God is truth. So the Spirit of Truth is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Come, Father of the poor. God loves those who call out to him in their need, but because of Jesus, baptism allows the Holy Spirit to dwell within people in a special way, while also making those people sons of God. The Holy Spirit is present in a special way when people become sons of God, an opportunity that anyone, even the poorest, can have. Come, giver of gifts. The Holy Spirit is both a gift himself given by Jesus, and also gives countless good graces to people's hearts, helping to encourage them in virtue and in doing all sorts of good things. Come, light of the heart. The Spirit of Truth reveals truth to people's minds, and heart is often used to mean mind. Greatest Comforter, Sweet Guest of the Soul, Sweet Consolation. The Holy Spirit is a consolation, even in bad times, and is welcome to any Christian who loves truth and virtue, because we all want God to be present to us in our hearts and minds, to help guide us toward salvation. In labor, rest. In heat, temperance. In tears, solace. This imagery expands on how the Holy Spirit is a relief for a struggling soul, by expressing that he gives needed help to those who work very hard, face oppressive conditions, and horrible sadness. O oh, most blessed light, fill the inmost heart of your faithful. Touch the core of our thoughts to fill them with the truth and dispel all deceptions that might lead us into sin. Without your spirit there is nothing in man, nothing that is not harmful. While some might view this phrase as similar to the Protestant doctrine of total depravity, it doesn't actually say that man is incapable of loving God. It doesn't even say that everything in us is bad or sinful without the Holy Spirit. Instead, it says that without the Holy Spirit, everything in human beings can cause harm, and that does seem to be true. Eyes, hands, feet, calculations, imagination, philosophy... All of these things can do harm to people if they're misused, and it's the Holy Spirit who helps guide us to use them correctly. Cleanse that which is unclean, water that which is dry, heal that which is wounded. We request the help of the Holy Spirit in repairing the broken things about ourselves and our existence, so that we can find truth and seek the goal of heaven. Bend that which is inflexible, fire that which is chilled, correct what goes astray. The words inflexible and chilled, in combination with the word astray, refer to a person who's begun turning against the will of God and has started to become hardened in their ways. We ask the Holy Spirit to move the hardened hearts of sinners so that they can repent again and turn back to God. Give to your faithful and those who trust in you the sevenfold gifts. This is a reference to the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is referred to in Isaiah 11, 2-3 under the title the Spirit of the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of fortitude, the Spirit of knowledge and of godliness, and he shall be filled with the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Isaiah 11, 2-3a. It should also be noted that the word fear in fear of the Lord refers to both strong respect and a type of concern that we might offend God through our actions a recognition of the negative consequences of sin, rather than a paralyzing terror. Grant the reward of virtue. Grant the deliverance of salvation. Grant eternal joy. I've already done episodes on the seven virtues of prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance, faith, hope, and charity, episodes 42 to 48. Check the link in the video description for links to those episodes. 
But this final part connects the virtues with the virtues of heaven, because the virtues are needed to persevere in our spiritual lives. So what we have here is a song that touches on many different qualities and gifts of the Holy Spirit and our own spiritual journeys, imploring him for help in our attempts to reach heaven. Next time, what is the Veni Creator Spiritus? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.